Hello, witchy friends. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Keisha, and today I'm going to be giving you some witchy book recommendations. Now, there are lots of different ways that witchy book recommendations videos could be done, but I felt that I could not fully encompass the vibes of this video, you know, without my witch hat, my witch robe. I don't have my broom. I don't have my wand, but I do have my spirit. And I'm in the Halloween spirit. We are witchy today. And I'm going to be giving you a variety of different spooky, cozy, witchy recommendations. I have some adult books, some young adult books, and some middle grade books to share with you today. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and get started. I'm going to start off this video with some graphic novel and manga recommendations. So I want to start with one of my all time favorite middle grade graphic novel series, and that is The Okay Witch by Emma Stein Kellner. I also have The Okay Witch and The Hungry Shadow, and I think both of these are great for the spooky season, but any time of year, they make for a great witchy read. The Okay Witch follows our main character, 13 year old Moth Hush, and she loves everything witchy. Little does she know, she is about to find out that she is actually part of a lineage of witches. Moth begins to find out about her heritage and also finds that while school has its bullies, life may have its bullies too. On her adventures, she meets a talking cat, she falls into an enchanted diary, and she discovers this secret witchy world. If you're a fan of stories about witches, the Salem Witch Trials, or even Halloween Town, I think that this might be the perfect graphic novel for you. Next up, I do have another graphic novel. This one is Young Adult, and it is called Witch for Hire by Ted Nappy. This is a book that also involves a little bit of bullying, and it follows our main character. Her name is Faye Faulkner, and she has just found a new friend who is a freshman named Cody. The way that these two meet is that Cody has just joined the loser's table in the lunchroom, and she meets Faye, and Faye is a little bit different than the rest of the losers at the table. Faye is a very unique kid to be sitting at the loser's table because she doesn't really consider herself to be a loser and she is actually okay with how everyone perceives her. But as you all know, it is not very easy to be going through school or life without sometimes letting people's opinions affect you. One thing that ends up becoming a problem in this story is that there is a cyber bully out there and her name is Sha Shelby and Sha Shelby is giving people different advice to help make themselves a better person or to help make themselves popular. The story gets darker from there and is inspired by some things that have happened in real life, at least to the extent that they can be realistic. So I found that this story was very interesting and I think this is a good recommendation for anyone who needs to be reminded that being alone isn't always the answer and when you surround yourself with a good group of friends, that can carry you a long way. And the last recommendation for this section is Witch Hat Atelier by Kamome Shirahama. I've heard this book pronounced a couple of different ways and I wanted to make sure I pronounced it correctly and I believe Atelier is the correct pronunciation according to Google at least, but you may have heard it also as Witch Hat Atelier. This is a manga and this is one of the few manga series that I really do enjoy. I own the first six books in the series and I've read the first three or four and I have been waiting on the rest of them to be released before I continue on. The story follows our main character Coco and she is obsessed with all things witchy and magical. But one day when a spell goes awry and her mother gets harmed, she ends up having to go off to witch school to try to hone in on her powers. I love this story so much and I love the person who's over the school, which his name is Quiffery and he is one of the most heartwarming cinnamon roll characters I know. This is a very heartwarming magical story that is very popular here on booktube. So if you haven't picked it up yet, this is your sign. I'm going to switch gears a little bit and go into some cozy witchy book recommendations. And the first one that I have for you is In the Company of Witches by R.L.E. Wallace. This is the first book in the Evenfall Witches B&B Mystery series, and it follows our main character, Bran Warren. And for 400 years, the Warren sisters have used their magic to quietly help the citizens of Evenfall. They currently own a cozy bed and breakfast where someone has fallen victim to murder. Now it's up to Bran to use her own magic and investigative skills to figure out what is happening at this B&B, and she may also be using a gift that she thought she was going to have to give up forever. The next witchy cozy mystery that I have to recommend to you is Curse the Day by Annabelle Chase. This is book one in the Spellbound Paranormal Cozy Mystery series. This was my first cozy mystery and I absolutely loved it. If you love things like Halloween Town and Harry Potter, I feel like this would be the perfect book for you. This story follows our main character, Emma Hart, and Emma is a public interest lawyer. She is on her way to meet a client when she sees someone that looks like they're about to jump off a bridge, so she immediately rushes to save them but it actually turns out that this is a fallen angel and he ends up saving her. 
Along the way, she ends up getting trapped in a town called Spellbound and finds out that she is actually a witch. Spellbound is this cursed town where all of these supernatural creatures live and it is a town where they have been cursed to not be able to leave. Not only is that an issue for Emma, but the public defender has just been murdered and there is a murder on the loose, a theft that has taken place, and clearly a mystery to solve. Now it's up to Emma to not only worry about being stuck in Spellbound, but also trying to figure out how to be a witch. She goes to witch school. She's also the new public defender. She's taking his spot and going to try to figure out this murder. And she also may be distracted by a pretty good looking fallen angel and also maybe even a hot vampire. Another cozy mystery that I have is Spells and Shelves, A Library Witch Mystery by L. Adams. This book is another one about a girl who finds out she is a witch. Our main character, Rory Hawthorne, is currently a bookshop assistant and she runs into this group of strangers and they are hunting down a journal that belonged to her late father. Rory is now coming to find out that she is actually part of a lineage of witches and that her father was a wizard. Now she has been invited by her family to come and live with them in their enchanted library, but then she stumbles upon a dead body that is hidden behind the bookshelf. So the mystery ensues from there. And the last book in the cozy mystery section is Southern Magic by Amy Boyles, and this is the first book in the Sweet Tea Witches series. This book follows our main character Pepper Dunn, and Pepper has had a string of bad luck. She has lost her job, her boyfriend, and her home, and it's basically the worst day of her life. But then she finds out that she is a witch, and she has inherited this familiar pet store, which is a little bit unfortunate as she doesn't like animals. But along the way of trying to come into this new life as a witch and own this pet store, another store owner has been murdered and she has been accused. So now it's up to her to not only adjust to this new lifestyle, but to try to solve the mystery as well. The next category I have is witchy middle grade books. And the first one I have is The Near Witch by V.E. Schwab. I think this is more of an upper middle grade, lower YA book. And it is a little bit part fairy tale and part love story. The Near Witch is only an old story told to frighten children. If the wind calls at night, you must not listen. The wind is lonely and always looking for company. There are no strangers in the town of Near. This is the bedtime story that Lexi has heard her whole life, but now a strange boy has appeared that seems to be fading in and out. And in the town of Near, all of these children are going missing. So now it's up to Lexi to explore what seemed to be a bedtime story, but may actually be the story of a real Near witch. The next recommendation that I have for you is The Tragical Tale of Birdie Bloom by Tim Ray Belts. In the fairy tale kingdom of Wanderley, everyone has a role. Birdie Bloom is a tragical. Doomed to an unhappy ending, she spends her days locked away with 17 other orphans at Foulweather's home for the tragical, where she's supposed to be learning to accept her terrible fate. Agnes Prunella Crunch is a witch, the wicked kind, which means she's supposed to be perfecting her witchy cackle and flinging curses from the Book of Evil Deeds. But lately, Birdie has been desperate for an escape, and Agnes has been in a bit of a witchy slump. The one thing they could both use is a friend. And with the help of some magical winds, a wayward letter, and a very unusual book, they might just find each other and together rewrite their story into one that, just between us, isn't very tragical at all. Next up, I have two editions of a classic, and that is The Witches by Roald Dahl. So I have the regular novel, and then I also have the graphic novel adaptation. This is a story about a boy who has only heard about witches and fairy tales, but now he is going to be confronted with real witches. No matter how many stories our main character has been told about witches from his grandmother, nothing prepares him for meeting the Grand High Witch. The next category I have is going to be young adult books, and I do only have two of these, but they are two that I think are pretty popular reads. The first one, I've taken the dust jacket off because I absolutely love the Under the Dust Jacket cover, and this one is The Nature of Witches by Rachel Griffin. This is a story about a girl named Clara, and Clara is one of many witches. Most witches have a season where their power is a little bit more heightened than in other seasons, but Clara is a very specific kind of witch. She is an everwitch, and everwitches are a little bit more rare. To be an everwitch means that your power is heightened in all seasons, and it's up to Clara to kind of help deal with some climate change issues and some weather issues to try to save the day. She is currently in training at a witch school, and she may also have a little bit of a romance take place along the way, and that may or may not be my favorite part of the story. The next book I have in the young adult section is one of my all-time favorite books, and that is The Wicked Deep by Shay Earnshaw. The Swan sisters arrived in Sparrow, Oregon in 1822. Margaret, the oldest, had long auburn locks, full lips, and a sharp jaw. Aurora, the middle sister, boasted soft waves of hair and bright full moon eyes. And Hazel, the youngest, was the plainest of the three, with small features and hair that twisted into a tumbling braid. Each was beautiful, and each was misunderstood. A year later, the townspeople executed the Swan Sisters for crimes of witchcraft. 
placing a curse on the small town of Sparrow, a curse that has never been broken. Until now, perhaps. Two centuries ago, the Swan sisters were accused of witchcraft and sentenced to death by drowning. Now every year, it's said that these three sisters come back and exact a vengeance on this town that did them wrong. Supposedly, the sisters come back and they will inhabit the body of three women and lure boys into the harbor to drown them. Penny Talbot has been around Oregon long enough to know these stories, but this year poses a little bit more danger for her in the town. Now it's up to her to not only save herself and save her town, but save this strange boy named Bo that has wandered into town aimlessly and appears to not know anything about the Swan Sisters despite the popularity of their story. The final category that I have today is just some adult witchy books. Some of them are romance. Some of them are just general fiction books. So let's go ahead and get into this last section. The first book I have is one that is very well known and that is Practical Magic by Alice Hoffman. Many of you may recognize this title by the movie of the same name that stars Sandra Bullock and Nicole Kidman. This book follows the Owen sisters and the Owens women have always kind of been looked at as blame for anything bad that happens in their Massachusetts town. The two sisters are fed up with how their aunts treat things because it seems like the way that they are living their lives is kind of encouraging the whispers of witchery. So one of the sisters ends up running away, the other one marries, but the bonds that they share will bring them back together almost as if by magic. Next is The Orphan Witch by Paige Crutcher. This book follows our main character, Persephone May, and she has been alone her entire life. Abandoned as an infant and dragged through the foster care system, she wants nothing more than to belong somewhere, to someone. But unexplainable things happen when she's around. Changes in weather, inanimate objects taking flight that result in her being cast out. To cope, she never gets attached. She moves around, leaving one town for another when curiosity over her eccentric behavior inevitably draws unwanted attention. After an accidental and very public display of power, Persephone knows it's time to move on once again. It's lucky then when she receives an email from the one friend she's managed to keep, inviting her to the elusive Wild Isle. The timing couldn't be more perfect. However, upon arrival, Persephone quickly discovers that Wild is no ordinary island. In fact, it just might hold the very thing that she's been searching for her entire life. And the last book that I have is A Letter to Three Witches by Elizabeth Bass. Nearly a century ago, Gwen Ingalls' great-great-grandfather cast a spell that had catastrophic side effects. Now, as a result, the Council of Witches have forbid his family to use any more magic. The Council has even planted snitches called Watchers out in the community to make sure that this family doesn't cast any more spells. However, as you all know, when someone's told not to do something, they tend to do it anyways, especially when it's such a huge part of who they are. So this family still practices witchcraft. A couple of different happenings go on. One of Gwen's sisters, Tanith, ends up bewitching someone. Her cousin Trudy accidentally enchants some cupcakes. And Gwen is trying to find out if her scientist boyfriend, Jeremy, is actually a Watcher spying on her. This story is sure to be jam-packed with magic, humor, heart, and a little bit of romance. Okay, friends, those are going to be all of the witchy book recommendations that I have for you today. If you stuck around this long in the video, go ahead and leave the little three-star sparkle emoji for magic down in the comments down below. If there are any witchy books that you would recommend to me, go ahead and leave those in the comments as well. Thank you all so, so much for watching. As always, I appreciate and love you so, so much, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye, friends!